Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The big upgrades came yesterday on those fantasy FC cards that we were looking for, but EA made things interesting with some big mistakes that actually led to cards going up on the market over a million coins because people were buying them in hopes of compensation. Yeah, we're going to break that down today. And there's more news about Ultimate Birthday Team 2, or at least the beginnings of the news. There was a player not included in Team of the Week yesterday that a lot of people thought he would be, which is leading them to think he might be in PAX tomorrow with Team 2. We're going to cover that and what else to expect today on the last day of Team 1 of Ultimate Birthday. If you're excited for the video today, drop a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Let's go into the content from yesterday really fast. Our daily Ultimate Birthday SBC player was a W as we had hoped. And it's not because it's a crazy, insane card that everybody wants to put straight into the team, but it's because it's a fun affordable with a big upgrade type of SBC. Amine Harith, five star, five star. He already had the skills. They gave him the weak foot. Tiki Taka Plus and Trickster Plus. The Tiki Taka is not often a playstyle plus that you see. I think it's a pretty good one, but that's just my opinion, especially for an attacking player like this card is. He can play on the left side and center forward. And I think his stats for a 35,000 coin SBC are really good. I mean, there's no complaints to be had about this since it's so cheap. Literally, guys, at least for me, I'm looking for somewhere to put 83 rated fodder. And that is all this squad, uh, this SBC requires. An 83 squad with a team of the week. It doesn't get much easier than that. It's even downvoted on uh, Footbin, 48% downvote, but are, uh, yeah, upvoted, I guess, downvoted 52%. But that is just, that's a must-do SBC with extra 83s that you get in the next couple of days. Just like sub him on as a super sub. Why not? I mean, maybe he's useful for a cup in the future. That's a card that you do really easily store away in your ultimate team. And uh, yeah, it's affordable for basically everybody. So that's a W in my book and nothing else. We had another SBC yesterday as well that was unexpected. And I don't think it's an SBC worth completing. I'm going to be completely honest. This is the ultimate birthday 100 upgrade pack. 100 players, which sounds super crazy, right? Oh my gosh, 100 players in a pack sounds insane. 40 golds, 35 silvers, 25 bronze. I think this is the third or fourth time we've had this pack this year. It first came out during like the Centurions promo or something. Guys, I don't think this SBC is worth it at all. I know it has the appeal of 100 players. Wow, only 40 of those players are gold. And for two squads, both being 84 rated, one needing a team of the week for a total price of just right around 70,000 coins. I just don't think what you're getting back from this pack is even worth the gamble. I would rather do an 82 times 20. I'd rather do the 85 plus player pick instead of this with my 83 fours and fives that I had in my club. And there's really not too much else for me to say about this, except think of it this way. You can actually go and pick up uh, three 89 rated cards right now for the same price that you can do that SBC and get yourself 153 players albeit some of them won't be rares like they are in that pack, but you will get 153 players that you can then put back into player picks and upgrades, whereas in the other pack, you're only getting 40 golds. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, that's what I would do if you're going to spend coins to do that SBC. Just do the 89 exchange three times because the cheapest 89s in the game are, what, 22,000 coins? So, bang, 66K to get those, and you get 153 players. So, that's my view on the whole situation right there. I think that SBC content yesterday was just kind of average. Now, also, we had the icon player pick refresh, which I'm still chipping away at the first one. Guys, this SBC is without spending coins and without getting a ton of rewards. I didn't have the best champs rewards. I didn't have the best rivals rewards today coming to me either. So it's a little bit difficult to craft, especially as I keep putting higher rates into exchanges. And with the player pick grind and with the 82 times 20, it's not as easy to get crafted this week without the 83 times 10 there but um a lot of people were doing this yesterday but it didn't make fodder go up uh, that much and i want to talk about the fodder and the market a little bit before we get into the big news from yesterday as well the market was really quiet if we're looking at foot birthday cards uh some cards moved around here or there i was able to sell the de bruyne i sniped late last night at 1.7 sold them at 1.8 eight seven or something right around those lines some cards are a little bit lower uh jota was down at 580 he went back to like 660 they're fluctuating a lot uh this rodrigo was down a little today araujo is up so it's a mixture of things Saka is up he was like 1.6 now he's 1.9 million same thing with the icons right some of them went down zambrato was like two mil now he's back to 2.2 butra had two price range updates uh now and he is finally on the market at 3.8 million coins i think he had two price range updates 
Yes, his, his uh, final one here is at 13.3 mil. He was uh, on the market, and then he got updated again. And uh, yeah, now he's finally on the market. So that is Butcher's price range at the moment. He is actually out. Schweinsteiger, I think, got a price range update as well for the skill moves version. Both of those items are around 450,000 coins. So all of our cards are on the market now besides Hullet. And that's because his price range is, of course, maxed out at 15 million coins. But it was a pretty quiet day yesterday, even for the fodder. With the Icon player pick refreshing, it, it didn't really go up that much, guys. Like the 88s, the 89s, the 90s, they're really just kind of stuck in the same areas as they were before. And I really don't think that bodes well for their prices even today with the rewards coming out, which we'll talk about that impact in the market a little bit, which I don't think is going to be that crazy. But if they ran lightning rounds on Tuesday and yesterday on Wednesday, they're probably going to run lightning rounds again today on Thursday. And that's going to bring a little bit of supply, but also I just don't see a bunch of demand for this fodder today. And of course, you get into a promo Friday, people get worried about the supply of packs being opened up for the new cards that will be in packs. I would probably say if you have this fodder, it's maybe just time to get out of it because it could actually go a little bit lower this weekend as a lot of the special cards are already lower than especially the 89s and the 90s. The cheapest 90s in the market right now are Politano and Marmouche. Marmouche was just upgraded and barely moved yesterday. Same thing with Candreva. They are 7,000 coins cheaper than the next gold 90 rated, which I think could actually end up pulling the golds down a price. So that's kind of the fodder situation. It's just not that great, except if you had 80 fours to 86 is that part of the fodder market is flying once again um, i think if you have this stuff you probably want to sell it right after content today if you're still invested in this but this is what a lot of people need right now to do the 8220s and all the sbcs so that is why it is going up maybe we remember that for next week that might be the better place to invest for fodder rather than the top tier because that is what is moving the most at this time depending upon of course what upgrade packs we Get. Now for the meta market as well, there were a couple of big drops on some specific cards that top tier and this does a little bit correspond to the leaks we're going to talk about in just a minute. But team of the year Holland, remember when he was 8 million coins a couple days ago? Yeah, he went down to 6.6 .6 million coins yesterday. He's now back up a little bit, right? When you see a big panic sell on a huge card like this, usually you do see a bit of a bounce back. But a lot of these team of the years are down bad and it's not just him jude bellingham was down like crazy yesterday as well i think it's because of what is coming of team two and at least the hype that team one has brought no people know that can be replicated for team two now the biggest thing yesterday we were all excited for the upgrades right and the stat upgrades like this 92 rolfo and my goodness before we talk about the mistakes and all the craziness what a card okay they gave her an even bigger upgrade i think it was to shooting and to dribbling than i expected 90 pace 89 shooting, 91 passing, 94 dribbling. This is a unbelievable card. Whether you play her at left back, maybe at left wing, or in the midfield, like I think a lot of people, including myself, plan to do, this real full card is insane, and she is going to be everywhere in Weekend League. Like Timo Werner already is, he got another really good upgrade too. They gave him plus two defense this time and plus two passing, which his passing has gone from, I think it was 80 when it started off, and now it's all the way up to 88, or maybe it was 82, now it's up to 88. Crazy boost there, makes his, make his him a really all-around top-tier attacker. Now we have uh, 98 short pass, still has a pretty low long pass stat at 75. But this Werner card just keeps getting better, has one potential upgrade left for him. P Poro did not get an upgrade yesterday. He did not deserve one. So if you were confused about that, Werner did get one for his third appearance. Poro only has uh, two appearances right now. He'll get one more in their next league game. Uh, for Rich, speaking of cards in my squad, for Rich looks really good, a great SBC, and then still being very lucky to pack the licked. He is definitely going to be a center back that's it's either him or a kanji starting in my team. Um, I haven't really decided who I like better out of those two. But those were two of the really good upgrades right there, Werner and Rolfo. Now, EA, I don't know what happened with this Gundawan card, but they gave him a massive boost, right? He got a plus two, but he got plus three pace, three defending, and four physical. That is the biggest plus two upgrade they've done for any of these cards. I don't know why he got such a massive boost. But he did. Fair play to EA. We take those. This card looks unbelievable now. And he actually did end up rising in price. He's over 300,000 coins now. He was like 270 yesterday. So a big rise there. Osbos card actually looks decent too. But he's more so just fodder. Same thing with Orban. Dropping both those cards technically dropped. So if you sold in the hype, G G's there. And then there was plenty of other upgrades as well. And even if you're looking out for like what upgrades could still be happening this weekend, what cards are still live, like Matson got a really sick upgrade too. He went to a 90 rated card. Um, he has one game left. If they score four goals, then I guess technically 
Um, he did they mess up on his card? One, one, two, three. No, they didn't. He could go to a 91 rated card if they score four goals. So him and uh, Timo are kind of in the same situation there. Uh, Marmouche even looks decent for a 28,000 coin striker with aerial plus and 98 pace. A lot of great cards here out of this fantasy promo. It's, it's really the upgrades have created some really nuts cards. Even though we knew the upgrades were going to do that, actually seeing the cards now is like, wow, it was really worth it to do this Teemo, to do this Rolfo. Uh, and especially for some of the cards being as cheap as they were in the SBCs, this fantasy promo is turning out to be kind of a dub for the players that we're now able to rock in our teams because of the upgrades and the accomplishments that these teams have gone on to hit. And, and then, of course, upgrading those players. Now, let's talk about the craziness because it all revolves around a couple of heroes. Yaya Toure was the first one. And this was the Yaya Toure yesterday when the cards got updated. This was the Yaya Toure that was shown on, on game. Yaya Toure, who actually, of course, is not a Premier League player. He was upgrading for Barcelona, guys, and EA yesterday. The mistake they made was they changed the Yaya's league from La Liga to Premier League. It has now been fixed, but when this happened, everybody saw this and was like, oh my goodness, EA made a mistake. This is crazy. He got an upgrade as well, right? He went from a 90 to a 90 rated card. Look at this graph. Bro went from 1.9 million, where he is back down to now, all the way up to 3.3 million. I saw a couple sell for like even 3.6. This card went crazy, crazy, crazy in price. And it was up at that price for about three hours. And it's now starting to drop after they have fixed this issue and fixed their mistake. Now, how did this happen? I don't know. Honestly, I do not know. Now, I, I will say one thing. It kind of feels like before in, in the past, there's been mistakes with like live and upgrading sorts of cards. Like what did I just see right there? What did I just see right there? 1.8 mil? Wow, he's even down a ton more. Um, they've made mistakes with live and upgrading cards before, but this one was just different because it literally gave him the, the prem links in game. It turned him into basically his base hero card for links, and he got those really good links. So while all this was happening, people weren't just buying up the card because they're like, oh my goodness, it's Yaya, it's prem. That's what's so hype. The reason his price went up so much is because people were reminded of this situation earlier on this year, which has happened three times. And it was the first time this year this happened, but it happened with Cruyff Thunderstruck, right? It was early on. Those who bought Cruyff Thunderstruck when it had the wrong playstyle plus on the card were going to be contacted in-game and sent back their ultimate team coins. And I remember earlier in this year when that happened, it was crazy because people had actually bought Cruyff during the time and they got 6 million coins back because it was a 6 million coin card. So they got to sell the card for 6 mil and then also get 6 million on top of that. That also happened earlier on this year with like John Joe Shelby and most recently during Road to the Final with Genduzzi. If you guys remember that, they put him out as a Marseille player instead of, uh, no, they put, him out, they put him out as a League One player instead of Serie A Lazio, right? So they messed that up. And they compensated you if you bought the player during the time that it was messed up. So everybody went out to buy this Wes, uh, this Yaya Toure. And as I started to say, Wesley Schneider, both yesterday, were starting to get invested in because Wesley Schneider also changed from La Liga. You can even see here, it's still listed up. Eredivisie. These are the cards that were listed up before it changed. Like it's weird how when the card is still active on the transfer market before a change is actually made, it'll still show as Eredivisie. But once this card expires and is relisted, or put into a team or whatever, then it'll change back to La Liga. It's kind of weird. But that's kind of the situation that happened yesterday with this card. So what people were doing was also with Wesley Schneider buying his card, right? He went from 2.3 mil up to 3.2. Buying his card, hoping that this sort of situation would happen again. And you're like, Nate, how does this impact me if I have less than 3 million coins? Which at the time, I did. I did not buy Yaya Toure. I did not risk it because... With so many people doing that and trying to exploit this potential, um, it's not even a glitch. It's just like a compensation situation. I feel like that makes EA less likely to want to do it because they're probably looking at all the data right now of people that bought Yaya Toure's for 3 million, hoping that they're getting 3 million coins back. And they're like, um, if we do this, this is going to impact the entire market. Think about how many, maybe thousands of players, because when this Yaya Toure was 3 million coins, it was literally just people paying this much for it to then turn around and sell it on the market so that other people could just buy it and sell it at the same time so that they could get that transaction right on their log or whatever they were trying to do sort of thing. And I understand why they did that because they were trying to take advantage of the situation. 
But is EA now not going to allow that and not going to let that happen because there were so many people that did that? Because if they gave back 3 million coins, which was the prices of that card when it was getting bought and sold, so all the people that did that, they would be giving out so many millions of coins that it would probably make a lot of the top middle to top tier part of the market on prices that are expensive it would probably make those prices go up because people would just have coins out of nowhere, right? It's kind of like just putting coins in people's accounts, kind of like they took coins away from me, right? <laughs> when we had the coin wipe situation, it's the opposite of that. They're like giving you coins. So that would impact the market a lot and it would make player prices go up if they were to do that sort of thing. Um, guys, since they haven't tweeted a thing about it, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what the compensation is going to be if there's compensation, but uh, I, we have to talk about that because that was really, really crazy when it happened yesterday. Also, here's a small thing that they messed up, messed up on. For some reason yesterday, when they upgraded Kiesa to a 91 rated card, they removed the skill move. He was 5-4, he is now, but he was showing us 4-4 for a couple of hours. So those are the three big mistakes. They made Yaya and Wesley Snyder uh, the wrong nation, uh, not nations, but league links, and they changed Kiesa's weak foot and skills. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. Watch EA's FC Direct Twitter account. But yeah, that would impact this whole game a lot if they were to give out the coin compensation for that. I could also see them just sweeping it under the rug and doing nothing because it was only three hours or so that that was happening. We'll have to see, guys. We'll just have to see. But that's the situation that went on there. Now, let's talk more about Foot Birthday and the leaks because there was a Foot Birthday card back a couple years ago that everybody remembers as one of the most iconic Foot Birthdays of all time. And it's this mad lad killing Mbappe. And the rumors is, the rumors are, the fact that there was not Mbappe in a team of the week that was just released yesterday. So Foot Sheriff is saying here that he doesn't have double confirmation, which is this Foot Sheriff saying that he has two leakers? I don't know. But he doesn't have double confirmation, but it seems very likely that he will come in Foot Birthday because Mbappe scored a hat trick over the weekend. And that is like, if you're ever going to get an inform, a hat trick is, <laughs> duh, you deserve an inform, right? And since he didn't get one, it's kind of like, hmm, there's a good chance that he could be in this promo instead of being in Team of the Week. I think there's some validity to this argument, but until it is an official leak that is posted by Sheriff, then I'm, you know, it's cr that would be a crazy addition to Team 2. And undoubtedly, this Mbappe would be extinct at 15 million coins. Um, just like the team of the year uh, is on the market currently still extinct at 15 million coins. So there's that. But it would definitely be a pack seller 100% for EA this weekend if they were go going to do something like that. I also saw a couple other tweets, and I don't think they were official leaks, uh, but it was just kind of like a speculation. Chow many doesn't have any special cards. We still have many cards who haven't seen them. Is it time? He says Mbappe was also leaked to be in Team 2. Maybe he's confirming that leak or just going off of what Sheriff said. Guys, I still think, you know, it's very possible that a Cristiano Ronaldo gets in because if there was a Messi in Team 1, Cristiano Ronaldo in Team 2, EA likes to do that Messi Ronaldo back and forth. They like to feed into that. I think it's possible for him too. So I wouldn't say those are concrete leaks, especially the Mbappe one. It looks likely for him, but we'll just have to see. I don't know if they're going to drop a loading screen today because... The second weeks of promos, they don't often tease loading screens, but I feel like they should for Team 2 because if they're going all out, they want to build the hype for it. I hope they do drop a loading screen today. Um, and I don't know about leaks, guys, because last week we didn't have any leaks until EA leaked a whole team themselves. We'll talk about that tomorrow, of course, with whatever situations come up, but maybe that'll change. Maybe it won't. Now, speaking of other leaks, we actually do have a little insight on that car design that we showed yesterday that was that hero design with the triangle in it that was very reddish-orange. We have some more news because there is an icon design that is similar, but not the exact same. This one really looks like Trophy Titans. I know this leak says the design seems to be a fusion between Record Breaker and Trophy Titans. That's Trophy Titans to me, and that just must be the car design. Because last year, the Trophy Titans design had that same orange edge around it, right? You, you guys remember that for sure if you played. This to me is Trophy Titans, and that's probably the promo we have after Ultimate Birthday, one of the promos that will lead us into the end of March, into April, and bridging the gap between Ultimate Birthday and Team of the Season, which is bound to be absolutely massive. But that looks to me like a icon design that is for Trophy Titans. So just to kind of put that in the back of your mind, that is something that is upcoming. 
here soon as well. Now, let's wrap it up. What's happening today on Thursday? Well, first of all, we got Rivals Rewards, the first big set of Rivals Rewards since the refresh. I'm not going to get my seven wins in, unfortunately. Ran out of time. It is what it is. Um, but for those of you that are taking rewards today, I'm still assuming that most people are taking the untradables. I'm totally taking untradables. Like the, the rewards here for division five, three wins is not that good. But a lot of people that are getting division three, division two, especially above division two, um, taking the untradable rewards for the reward upgrade, you're getting some good stuff, right? I think most people are still taking untradable because you get more packs that way and you get more fodder. So I'm not expecting fodder to absolutely like drop in price today because of the fact that those untradable rewards are going to be opened. I really don't expect that at all. Really, what I would expect to see is more so maybe more people going out and doing a couple SBCs here or there. But I feel like the market will largely be unimpacted uh, from those rewards, um, even though they are good. Really, I don't think it's going to impact prices on the market too very much. Now, an SBC coming out today, we talk about more Thursday content. Our last daily SBC player of the week it is, I think, one of the bigger names that is in this entire list that we've seen all week, guys. It is Grimaldo. And yes, that is Alex Grimaldo, Alejandro Grimaldo, the Leverkusen left back that's got three informs this year and a winter wildcards item. He's been killing it. And he's also very OP in this game. If you actually look at the number of games played, this 86 inform Grimaldo was very popular early on in the year. He has... 5 million games played. That's a lot for just a random 86 rated inform. This card is very good in game. He's very meta. Um, and I don't even want to know, first of all, what a stat boost they're going to give to him. I think they're all the SBCs they've given out so far have been in, in the base cards position. So like, I don't think Grimaldo is going to be a center mid like the winter wild cards. I imagine he's going to be a left back today, guys. Can you imagine a double play style plus Grimaldo Hopefully with a five-star weak foot, all right? I mean, five-star skills would be cool. If he's going to be five-star skills, he better also have the five-star weak foot as well. So it's either 5-5 five, five or maybe 4-5 with the weak foot being the five-star, I would hope, for this card. He could be very cracked. I mean, you look at this 88-rated card, we're probably going up to like a 91, maybe. Maybe a 92. Maybe that's a little bit high rated. I mean, Quadrado, Coman was a 91. Quadrado was an 89. And Openda was a 90. So maybe 90 rated is a better guesstimate. But you're talking a plus two here. You're going above 90 dribbling. You're going at 90 passing. 94, 95 pace. He's going to be a really, really good card. And I hope that the double play styles include Anticipate Plus. If they give this card either Whipped Pass Plus, Anticipate Plus, or both of those, this card could be nuts. So... Usually Thursday SBCs don't go that crazy, but this one actually has really good potential. So I've actually, you've seen me checking the price a couple of times. I've picked up some um, Boniface cards. This was one of my favorite cards earlier on in the year. He was so fun to use. I picked up a couple of these at 85K just because he could be a card that rises up in the links to Grimaldo coming out today. I wouldn't pay anything more than like 87,000 coins. And if you look at his graph, he does fluctuate pretty good. But if this Grimaldo today has hype, then there is a very, very good chance that some of those Leverkusen links could rise. I'm not putting a ton of coins into it. I only have like four or five of them. Um, but that's just something to watch out for because that could happen today. And that could be really, really Good. So that's our SBC player for today. I don't think there's going to be too much else other than that. The store packs for the lightning rounds probably, and then marquee matchups, and then maybe a loading screen and maybe leaks. I mean, again, we did not have leaks last week, so I don't know what we're going to see this week in terms of players announced early for Foot Birthday Team 2. We will just have to see. And in the video off with an 81 double, we're getting Lukaku. I need all the 84s I can get, man. I'm struggling to get 84s. I have every single 82 in the game, though, in my club. Shout out to those Fodder packs and player picks. 82.20, man. I don't know. I need that 83 times 10 back for sure. But anyways, guys, that's the video for today. Hopefully, Grimaldo's a beast. That will be a card I would be super down to put into my team. I know we have so many left backs, but give him left mid positioning too. And that could be pretty good and a fun card and a very meta card to try out as well. So if you enjoyed the video today, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys in the Twitch stream today. That link is in the description. It's been Nathan for the account. See you guys there. Peace out.